welcome to my channel. Well, as you can see, I like Stockman knives. Most of these are sow bellies. There's some odd ones in there. But I saw this on sale at Shepherd Hills, and it's the case. They call this a large Stockman. And I always thought these guys were large stockmans, but these are actually jumbos or Texas stockmans, so they're they're a little bit bigger. <clears throat> but what we have here is a case peach seed jig bone. If you hold this up to the light and have light shining through it, there's a little gap in a liner back here, but I mean it's smooth. Everything is smooth. I don't feel any transitions. So I'm happy with the uh, fit and finish. Now, what we have here is there's no half stop on this. And I, I'm, I'm getting to like that better than, than a half stop. The old, old way. Mainly because when you're going like this and you've got a half stop, it... Uh, you know, it'll it'll go up into that, and then from here to there, uh, and so if you're not ready for this, it'll snap back on a half stop. Let me see if I can. Does this guy have a half stop? No. I'm pretty sure this guy's got a half stop. Yeah, see that? It kind of jumps out of your hand. You're 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 pulling the nail, in, pulling it like this, and then boom. You know. It's just a minor thing. If you're handling any particular knife, you're going to have to get to used to how it works and how it feels and everything. And you can cut yourself. I can cut myself with or without a half stop. That doesn't seem to be any main feature. But if you... Uh, I'm thinking of people like Slick Slicers that has like the use of one hand would probably have an easier time opening one of these because it's a it's not a build up of torque that's what i'm trying to say is you know like you you break the initial one and then it starts getting looser and then a little bit tighter it's more of a gradual you know the torque is more towards here and here instead of uh at a 45 i don't know i don't know why i'm getting into all that but <clears throat> anyways this one has got kind of a purplish hue to it and the box says crimson bone. So that's where you get the, the kind of reddish color in there. It looks more purplish to me. Large uh, jig, peachy jig, large stockman, 6375. And this one was born on 6-15-22. I'll see April, May, June. June. June 15th of 22. So if you look at the dots, the way they dot stuff, there are eight dots here. And so reversing it would make that a, a two year in that. In this case, 22. No match strike nail, Nick, but... I, I think these look better, actually, than a, than a match strike. And yeah, it's traditional and everything, but how many, how many times are you going to go striking a match off your nail neck? And these things right here are harder to clean out. I mean, you can do it, but they just absorb crap a lot easier. This one, you just whoosh, with the blade, and you can clean that right out. Nice transition here. It's got a pretty good lock up to it i i'd rate this you know it's kind of hard <clears throat> gizmo and i were talking about this in a email i was i was looking at trigger pull gauges and the most accurate way you know to to measure a pull on a knife is to set it in a vise and put a trigger pull gauge on it and attach it to the blade and have it pull up and you can measure how many pounds of force you're actually using. But for most people, we rate it, 
I rate it from a zero to a 10. Zero being there is no spring. You turn it like this and it goes And 10 being, man, you're gonna lose a fingernail. You're gonna lose a fingernail if you try to pull it. Some of them are just so strong that they got carried away. They, there's a sweet spot on, uh, on uh, pull weights anyways. This one I would say four, about a four. Not the strongest in the world, but if you're holding it like this, you shouldn't get cut. I mean, it's got a substantial kick there, and if you place your finger like that, you shouldn't get cut. Um, so yeah, let's, that's the main blade. Let's check the length, even though they probably got it listed in specs and everything. I like to just see what we're getting here. So you've got a almost three inch cutting edge. It's like two and seven eighths. And the blade itself, if you go up to the bolster, is three and three eighths. That's on the main clip blade. All right, you switch it over to the other side and you get your sheep's foot. Nice big sheep's foot. Here's the numbers here. Six is, I think, for a jig bone. Three is the number of blades and 75 is the pattern. And then SS is for stainless steel. We got a nice little sheep's foot here. one and three quarter inch cutting edge and about two and a quarter overall if you went all the way up to the tang somehow on a sheep's foot you'd have to be doing a lot of plunging into something and the ever popular spay blade now this guy's a little bit shorter than uh well you know a spay blade on a stockman is shorter i, I was thinking about a trapper i was like man that, you let things as long as the other one but i'm getting it mixed up with the trapper this one just has a marking of SS on it, stainless steel. We've got a one and seven eighths inch blade. I'm trying to get it up there. And about two and a quarter overall. And then, then the overall length, this is square in with little, oh, what would you call those? They're not pinched. It's like angled bolsters. That little smudge there. Four. Almost four and a half inches. Yeah, about, about four and a half inches overall. <clears throat> now, let's compare this blade to a Rough Rider and see what the difference is. It's a different shape to the Rough Rider. The clip is more downward pronounced on the case. They're about the same, same blade length of each other. Smack! I'll smack this one. And, ooh, nice smack. Let's look right there and right there. And I don't see any blade rat. See, to me, I don't care how much the knife is worth. If you go like this, now I know some of the French knives are, don't, are designed that they'll, they'll blade wrap like that. But I mean, other than that, if it's a traditional knife like this, to me, the knife should be able to survive this. You know, coming down under its own tension, not not giving it extra. If you do that and you get blade wrap, in my opinion, the knife was not manufactured properly. It shouldn't have made it out of the factory. That should be one of the main tests. I mean, besides sharpness, which the burr is on this side. There's a burr on this side, all the way along the edge. So it's uniform, but it's not... It's not as sharp as it could be. 
now, again, this is a big controversy for some people. To me, as long as the edge is maintained, yeah, it would be nice. It would be nice since it's a knife for it to be, you know, super sharp. But, sorry, all this earthquake bumping here. I'm trying to give it a good chance to cut. All right, when you do it that way, it does, it does decently. Even though it's got that burr, it cut this, this paper fairly cleanly. So what I'm saying is a lot of times on a case knife, you're going to get a working edge. Uh, a working edge will last longer than a shaving edge. Uh, the shaving sharp edge is nice, but a lot of times will dull out the burrs on this side. It's not on this side. And they kind of did something up here. But if you look how they grind these a lot of times, somebody's just sitting there on a belt, you know, a belt sander going, meh, meh, you know, or like this, meh, meh. and uh, they do that all day long. It, it, what I've seen from the ones I was saw of, of Case putting them together. So anytime you've got a human operating something, This isn't too bad, but a lot of times you're going to get a narrowing up here on the belly. The burr's on this side. See, it's not on this side. So you can tell which is the last side they sharpened. This side. Again, it's, it's probably going to be... Now, considering what you're using a spade blade for if you're in a stock... I'd want that thing sharp. You don't, you don't want it dragging or pulling... Yeah, this is, the animal would, would uh, freak out more than the animal normally would freak out. Yeah, there's some drags in there. <clears throat> but, if you know how to sharpen a knife, this is no issue. This is only going to take a little, I, I'm going to take a ceramic stone to the side that uh, has a burr on it. I'm just going to go, Wrink. I'm going to leave the other side alone. And then I'm going to strop it. And it'll probably get to be shaving sharp. So, that's all I got to say about that. You get what you pay for. And in this case, you're paying $61. You could probably get four or five of these for the same price. But, this is a case knife. This knife right here, you can look at it and you can tell exactly what year it was made. And the other blade tells you what pattern it should have been. I mean, how many blades are, are in there. Case has been around since the 1800s. I think it's like 1889 or 1886. Rough Rider's been around since 1995 or 94. Um... So yeah, that's that's part of what you're paying for is a, a long established company and these are uh, the material I would say especially the, the way Case usually does their bone and everything and you can't you can't beat that. They just do a very good job on their on their dyeing and their coloring. I saw one where somebody said that they were looking at a knife and they said, well, it's not as, it's not as, um, it's not as dyed towards the end here. And it just depends on the knife you're looking at. I'm pulling up a bunch of different knives. But you're going to get a random <coughs> color on smooth bone. On jig bone, it's usually going to be darker in the center. Just from the way that I think the dye pulls up when they do that, but yeah, I I didn't have a I didn't have a, a stockman. I didn't have a sow belly. I still got to get a case sow belly. I didn't have a sow belly. I didn't have a stockman. And my dilemma, my dilemma on getting this knife was the amount of money. Again, you know, when you're on a budget, if if you wanted if you wanted quantity. 
then you would get a bunch of different Rough Riders. And I was going to get four or five Stoneworks knives. And, it, and I looked at the price, and it was like $80. And I said, man, you know, for that price, I could get a case knife. That's what usually pops up in my mind is case knives are usually um, out there in, the, in a price range. So I got to at least have $60 to $80, you know, usually to get one, unless you're going to go with, like, synthetic or composite handles and stuff. You might be able to get a little bit cheaper. But you're going to spend that much money. The thing is, these are going to retain their value and go up usually. Retain and increase their value. The same can be said of these a lot of times. These will increase in their value. But if it started off as $20 or $15 and it goes up to $30, yeah, you've made, if you sold it, you know, you, you've made $15. If this one starts off as $60 and goes up to $100, <laughs> you've made $40. Uh, so you've got you've got a bigger range, and if this thing doubled, you you made sixty dollars. I'm not I'm not doing it for an an investment, but it's just nice to know that the things that you're getting increase in value rather than decrease. That that gives you some idea of of you know possibly of what their their intrinsic value is. You know, to you, this knife may do everything that this knife can do and save you money. That, that's fine. But if you're a collector, this is where they get the case collectors. I think they jack the price up because they know no matter what they're going to do, they're going to be able to sell uh, a lot of them, whatever pattern they put out. So I'm not, I'm not beating up on case. I, I like them. Um... I didn't get in on the early cases where they had super great fit and finish, supposedly. And so I don't know the difference between the early case and the older cases. But the ones I'm seeing right now, I don't feel like I've been ripped off. I don't, I don't feel like, you know, it's an American-made company. You're going to pay a little bit more for that. And they're good knives. Um, they're good. They can be good working knives, too. A lot of people buy these not to not to show up but to use you know so there you go that's this is my little you know thing on uh, stockman eyes i think it's a great pattern you usually get three blades you've got a variety of what you need so in in one pocket you have basically got three knives and what does this guy weigh i think it's like three ounces or so a little bit a little bit more all y'all are going to have to scoot back because you're going to affect the, the weight. Get back here. All right, I think we're in grams. 107 grams. 3.78 ounces. So, there you go. Well, that's my latest case knife. I got it from Shepherd Hills. It was on special. You could probably get them two if you wanted one. So there you go. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.